at least we have that to look forward to, at least in what, terms of... What, the bad weather to look forward to? You got some the high cold. heat across the Ohio Valley, so that's, a, I guess, some good news for you, right? I'm enjoying the current uh, little bit of a warm-up, especially after that nonsense a couple weeks ago. And you know what else with that, as you say, quote, nonsense comes with uh, that cold air? It was snowflake activity, Steve. And that's actually where I want to take us to our next news segment is what we experience in regards to snow. It, it, it can be beautiful other than a burden whenever you're traveling, uh, but there's plenty of uh, science and understanding as to why things happen in the development of the snowmaking process. Here's part one of Science of Snow. When you look at snow, snow crystals, it's amazing the different kinds of shapes they can take on. You know, they really are a letter from the sky. You know, they tell you something about how the atmosphere was behaving. The science of snow is fascinating. With its unique freezing and melting properties, water is one of the most intricate elements on Earth. Understanding how the atmosphere is working and moving is critical when it comes to snow forecasting. Snowflakes grow in what's called the dendritic growth zone. Now, this is a range in the column of air above the Earth's surface that allows for snow formation. It's a critical layer in the atmosphere that meteorologists from the National Weather Service analyze when forecasting snow. That's, that's simply a, a, a range of temperatures uh, below freezing, negative 8 Celsius to negative 23 Celsius, uh, so, so cold. Um, and that, that temperature is an ideal range for those ice crystals to take on the shape of dendrites, which produces very efficient snow. So what is efficient snow and what happens if the snowflake's path changes? All of these different kinds of characteristics of crystals depend on their path through the atmosphere. And so that's the reason why it's such a challenging forecasting problem is because crystals are going all over the place. They're traveling all these different paths through your cloud systems, through your storm systems, what have you. Thank you, Zach. In part two of our Science of Snow sequence, Zach will explore some of the challenges in forecasting winter weather and why understanding how much moisture in the atmosphere is critical in snow totals. Coming up next.